What's up YouTube? Today is about ALC files, .alc, which stands for what? You hear it, Ableton Live Clip, that's right, Ableton Live Clip. And that may seem obvious, but actually in my experience as a teacher, professor, whatever you wanna call me, I teach a lot of classes, okay? And when I teach, I always ask folks, I'm like, who uses ALC files? And I, I get no hands, nobody, very, Rare, I don't think I've ever had a student, a single student, say, yes, I, I use ALC files, I know what they are, I love them, and they're a part of my workflow. And uh, that breaks my heart, because ALC files are dope. They're, in my opinion, one of the coolest features about Ableton, and they're one of the sort of least known, least understood. So as I'll, I will call it, I will put my official stamp right now, one of Ableton Live's best kept secrets, okay? All right, so without further ado, let's, let's jump in. So what are ALC files? ALC files are clips that can contain multiple data points of information, which are very useful. And I'm gonna just leave it, leave it at that for now, and then I'm gonna show you. So let's, uh, I'm gonna start off with an empty session here. Let's say, for example, I'm in the sound design stage of the process. So uh, if you have a workflow type of a situation laid out, which I, I recommend that you do, um, typically you're gonna wanna break your production stages into separate components. So I like to have a pre-production stage. And in the pre-production stage, that's where I do sound design, um, dig through my sample library, you know, write patches, um, come up with uh, different racks of effects and processes uh, so that I have this information and these sort of uh, presets and tools available to me when I actually go and do the songwriting stage and I need to actually pull things in and I wanna be able to pull things in very quickly. So, uh, so this is kind of a pre-production trick if you uh, subscribe to that type of a workflow. Um, okay, so I'm gonna actually start off with a third-party instrument. And the reason I'm gonna start off with a third-party instrument, not a, a native Ableton instrument, is because one of the interesting things that happened when Ableton Live 9 came out, this didn't exist before 9, um, is this ability to preview sounds. So <clears throat> if I go just into, for example, the instruments, and I open up analog and I look at the bass, I can actually go in and can audition the sound of the patch before I actually even open the instrument, which is really fantastic. Um, but this only works for native Ableton instruments. This doesn't work for third-party instruments. So what if we want to get it to work for third-party instruments? Well, there's a way, and it's a way using ALC files. So um, I'll just open up, for example, um, Silent. Why not? We'll say, cool, open up Silent. There it is. And let's go ahead and, you know, we can just... Uh, say that we'll initialize this patch. So we'll go here and we'll go ahead and just initialize or clear our patch. All right. There we go. So we've got a patch. Um, doesn't have to be anything fancy. You know, say we did some sound design, say we didn't, doesn't matter. For the purposes of this demo, I just wanna show you how this works. So I've got my silent and let's go ahead and get some, we'll do some processing. So maybe I'll grab an amp plugin from uh, the Ableton presets. Um, maybe I'll grab a few other things. Maybe I'll grab a filter. So just do there, grab an auto filter. And maybe I throw a compressor, you know, at the end of the chain. Okay, there's my compressor. Cool, all right. Now I've got this really gritty sound, might be good for some glitch hop. Um, and, uh, and I'm like, okay, this is like a nice sound. I wanna be able to access the sound. I wanna be able to use this sound for my production on, a, on an ongoing regular basis. You know, maybe this is part of my signature sound. Uh, so, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do shift command M, right? It's a key command to make a MIDI clip. <clears throat> and at that point, you know, maybe I'll draw something in, maybe I'll uh, record something in. For, this, for the, these purposes, I'll just, <coughs> I'll just do something like this. Great, so I've got a little pattern, awesome. Now, I'm gonna give this clip a name. And I'll call this, you know, say I wanted to do some glitch hop, I'll call this glitch hop base start. Great, 
So we're almost there, we're almost there. This is a clip, but it's not an ALC file. It's not an Ableton Live clip just yet. Right now it's just a MIDI clip. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my user library and I recommend in your user library that you really get um, uh, organized and have lots of folders. Like I have different folders for different projects, different types of sounds. Um, for the purposes of this demo, I'll make a new folder. I'll call it demo. I already have a folder called demo. I've never done this before. Uh, I'll call this demo YouTube. Okay, great. And then maybe from within there, I might make a folder called face patches or even better, ALC patches. Awesome. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this clip, MIDI clip, boom, drag and drop. And look, now we can see glitch hop bass start dot ALC. Boom. Hit return. Now we have our ALC file. So now I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a new live set and I'm not going to save it. Okay, great. Well, guess what? It's still in our user library because once it's in your user, your user library, excuse me, it's going to live there forever. So for those of you who don't know where your user library is, it's under the music folder. Then we go to the Ableton folder and then there it is. There's our user library. So that is going to mirror exactly what we see here in the browser. And so you guys remember what I told you about auditioning third party instruments. Well, now because we've turned it into an ALC file, we can audition right in the browser. And then of course, if I double click, boom, now we've been able to successfully bring this clip in, not only with the MIDI, which was initially part of it, but also with the instrument, which was a third party instrument and all of the effects. By the way, this also works for third party effects and this also works for audio files. So by the same token, if I make an audio track, excuse me, go into my sample library, look for, for example, I don't know, kick, fine, great, drag and drop. Maybe again, I do some processing, um, grab a compressor from my audio effects. Maybe I grab uh, some kind of third party audio effect. Oh, I don't know, let's see. Maybe we bring in something from Sugar Bites, Tornado, okay, boom. And again, I name this and I will call this crazy kick. And again, go back into my user library and I had this folder. This would not, not be a base patch, but obviously kicks, move that here, boom. And then I can drag and drop that here. And now I've got my crazy kick ALC file. And again, if I delete that track, double click, there it is. So there you have it. That's pretty much it. ALC files. It's a great way to save your ideas, your sort of uh, sound design, you know, your concept pieces, your signature sounds, anything that you think that you'd like to save and reuse over and over again from different projects and different sessions uh, to help ex expedite your workflow and make you faster, better, stronger producer. All right, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tip. Um, by the way, one thing I wanted to say, if you guys have any ideas for future tips, uh, we're taking suggestions. So consider it like uh, it's a wedding and I'm DJing and you wanna hear Justin Bieber. <laughs> I know you don't, but you can make a song request or a tip request in the comments below. So definitely feel free to do that. And final, final note, um, we've launched a Paramind mentorship program here. Uh, which is an online program. And basically what it means is you can book me or anybody else who you've seen doing these Paramind videos uh, for a session. So one-on-one -on -one Google Hangout session to go over your music, your production, your workflow, your business questions, your audio questions, your life questions, whatever it may be, we're here to help you guys. So um, yeah, so check out the Paramind Mentorship Network. We'll put a link down below as well in the description and I'll see you guys on the next video. Party. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest Pyramind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at pyramind.com.